The most precious thing in Chantelle Johnson's life is her beautiful two-year-old daughter, Tamer Mahara. It's a Maori name, meaning to remember, which in all likelihood is something 38-year-old Chantelle is going to forget very soon. That's because she was born with a genetic mutation that's given her a 98% chance of developing early onset Alzheimer's disease. Chantelle inherited the condition from her mother, who died from Alzheimer's at 47. And there's a 50% chance she's passed it on to her daughter. Cruelly, 244 Aussies are diagnosed with dementia every day, and that number is rising. But there is hope. A world away in the mountains of Colombia, an Australian scientist is on the verge of a breakthrough to defeat dementia for good. It's a simply unforgettable backdrop. This rugged stretch of pristine coastline is where Chantel Johnson calls home. But it's only a matter of time before she won't remember any of it at all. The idea that I could lose that ability to be able to share that or to be able to communicate my feelings or thoughts or to cheer someone up or to... Or, 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 uh, it, it does... It, it is a sad thought. At just 38, Chantel's doctors have warned her that at some point in the very near future, she will develop Alzheimer's disease, an insidious form of dementia that will rob her of her memory, cognitive skills, and within years, her life. So you're almost certainly destined to get it? Yes. I mean, in a sense, you've got it. It's just a question of when it triggers. Yes. If it's there, it's there. And for the most part, that's 100%, you know, green light to dementia. It's a chilling prognosis. But Chantelle is not alone. Dementia is now the leading cause of death among Australian women and the nation's second biggest killer overall. So these four, mm -hmm. uh, which one in these four has it? So that's my mum and she had it and that's her mum and she had it. But few families have been devastated by it quite like Chantelle's. And that's because they're carriers of a rare genetic mutation. With those unlucky enough to inherit it, all struck down by Alzheimer's in the prime of their lives. So how old was your grandmother when she had it? Um, she passed away at 47. Around about the same age as your mum? Same age as my mum. Yeah. Wow. Seeing your mum go through it, mm. how difficult was that? What she was going through was excruciating. In, in what way? And it came down to where she, she couldn't eat. She couldn't swallow, she couldn't do any of those things. And so essentially she spent seven days starving to death as a result of those things that happen with that dementia. And I think it's important for people to understand that dementia isn't just a, a thinking condition, it's a very physical um, condition. Maybe an eye in there. Is there an eye in there? But it's not her own health that Chantelle is concerned about. This is your beautiful little girl. This is Timo Mahara. Hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Three years ago, the unexpected happened. She fell pregnant. Despite the risks, she decided to keep the baby and in 2015 gave birth to a girl. What's her Are you name? shaking hands? Her name is Timo Mahara. Timo Mahara. Yeah, That's beautiful. perfect. It's a Maori name meaning to remember. A gentle nod to the condition that now hangs over both their heads. Hey, you you knew the chances of you passing it on to a baby, mm -hmm. your own baby, was pretty high. Yes. Well, 50-50. Hmm. The, 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 there are uh, lots of other things that, you know, you could give them red hair or blonde hair. But she's my daughter and I'll do everything that I can to, to do what I can to make it work for her and hope that things work out. Please take this the right way. Mm -hmm. But haven't you essentially consigned her to the same sadness with you that you had with your mum? I can, I can understand where you're coming from, from 
um, with that. That was a, it was a decision that I guess her father and I made and we, we didn't take it lightly. Um, I mean, if I had a child who was um, profoundly disabled in utero and was never going to have any quality of life, then I probably would have made a different decision. But she's got a wonderful life ahead of her. Acutely aware their time together will be brief, Chantelle swapped Sydney for a more relaxed life in rural New Zealand. I can see why you like to be here and have her grow up here. It's a beautiful spot, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. But the devoted single parent has decided not to find out whether her daughter shares her deadly gene mutation. In my mind, that's a good 30 years away. And I'm quite confident that in terms of the work that they're doing in, in treatment um, trials, etc., that that's not even going to be an issue for her. But uh, Chantelle, no offence, but mm -hmm. she's only two. Yes. So in 16 years time, mm -hmm. when she's allowed to be tested, yes. you might not even be around. No, I won't. That's why I'm preparing the people around her. So for my, for my dad, for my, the, the people who I have in her life, she's the focus of my life and she will be. Um, so all of those people from her dad's family, from my family, all of those people will be made aware of and educated on how all of that works. And I will put my trust in those people to explain it to her in a way that isn't, you know, isn't terrifying, but then she may choose not to be tested and she might just choose to continue on with her life and, and see what happens. Sol de los arenales. Chantel's hopes now ride on a team of researchers working half a world away in the remote mountain village of Jaramal, high up in the South American Andes. There's almost 5,000 people living here and thanks to their ancestors and a lot of intermarrying between families, a huge number of them have inherited the Juramal curse or what the locals here like to describe as la bobera, meaning the foolishness. It's a simple genetic mutation but it means they have a 50% chance of developing early onset Alzheimer's. The disease will strike them at around about age 40 and kill them within 10 years. It's incredibly sad, but the scale and the concentration here means it's delivered to scientists the perfect laboratory to try to find a cure. When did the Juramal curse first begin? It looks like it was a conqueror, a Spaniard conqueror that came to uh, uh, Colombia. Uh, it must be around the 1700s. It's incredible, isn't it, to imagine that it just started with one person. Exactly, exactly. Dr Mauricio Arcos Burgos is an Australian geneticist from Canberra who spent decades studying the villagers. Now he's confident he's on the verge of a major medical breakthrough. The idea is that we can, we know who is going to develop the disorder and we can follow them through the whole natural history of the disease and see we can intervene and transform their natural history. Working with a team of scientists, Dr. Arcos Burgos is using Jaramal's residence as the ultimate guinea pigs to test an experimental new drug. It aims to delay the buildup of toxic amyloid proteins that attack the brain and stop Alzheimer's before it even starts. It's a landmark trial that's attracted the attention of big pharma and health firms because of its potential to save millions of lives and make billions of dollars. How important for the rest of the world is it to be able to delay the onset? Uh, I have to tell you that some of the genes that we found may delay the age of onset up to 17 years. 17 so it's, years. it's a huge, important factor. Professor, if you can delay the onset of this thing long enough, effectively, that's a cure, isn't it? Absolutely, it's a cure. Even though the people of Jaramal 
are victims of a genetic form of Alzheimer's, Dr. Arcos Burgos says his work will lead to a cure for all sufferers, and that it could be as close as just five years away. While the world waits, the growing number of Australians already diagnosed with the condition must learn to live as best they can. And at Belmere, north of Brisbane, there's a tiny community designed to help them do just that. The nation's first dementia village. It replicates the look and feel of a typical Aussie town, right down to the familiar corner store, and places residents in individual homes rather than closed wards to give them a greater sense of independence. Hi. Hi. Come on in. Hi, Stephen. How are you? Angie Nichols' husband, Stephen, is one of the first residents. Good job. OK. So I'm going to do a couple of tests with you, Stephen, if that's OK. Just three years ago, the dedicated father of five was running his own business. You want to try? Open your hands for me. But such as the rapid deterioration of Alzheimer's, okay. the 61-year-old now struggles to simply clap. And use this hand. Let alone identify his own children. Your five boys, C can you name them for me? Um, um, St Stephen. Yep, that's your name? Yes. And the boys name member, Zane, took you out yesterday? Yes. 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 Yep. Despite his heartbreaking decline, Angie insists Stephen's new environment has done wonders for both his outlook and theirs as a family. You want to see Daddy? Well, I'll just manhandle the dog and tell you. Stephen, what are you looking forward to? Um, in the future, you, you mean? Yeah, in the future. Basically, I, I would rather do, to be able to do, to be able to just get to to look after the kids. Sadly, no matter the outcome of Dr. Arcos Burgos's clinical trial, any cure will come too late to save those already suffering Alzheimer's, such as Stephen. But. Like Chantel Johnson, he's certain future generations, including her daughter, will no longer know the ravages of the deadly disease. It's realistic. She's right. With the development that we have had in the last month, I think that uh, we are close enough to get to something that will be a cure. So she's right and realistic in these terms. So her daughter might just get very lucky in that time frame. Absolutely. As for Chantelle, she hopes she'll be around long enough to see her little girl become a young lady and to leave her with some truly lasting and loving memories. I will always love her. It doesn't matter whether I can say it or I can't. I write little notes for her whenever I have a thought about something and I pack them away. What sort of things do you write? <laughs> <laughs> They're just little bits of thoughts and paper that I sort of pop in a box. Some of the funny things that she comes out with, she's so clever. Things that I won't be able to tell her about herself. So you're hoping for a cure, but also you're just in case. You always need a backup plan. I think that if everybody gets in and supports the people who are doing all the hard work to find a, a solution to this, then and hopefully we'll have a better, better chance of, of me not having to worry about the little notes in my box. Thank you.